Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today. We get to the last few weeks of the church year, and today our focus is called saints, triumphant. The word saints is another word for believers, and triumphant reminds us that when Jesus comes again, all those people who believe in him will be triumphant because Jesus has won the victory for us. So we rejoice on this day. We'll begin with our first hymn, number 551, for all the saints. Thank you.
we follow the service of the word on page 38. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his own dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
chapter 10. What is our hope for eternal life? In the Old Testament, the priest offered sacrifices again and again, but never paid for sin. But there's a new high priest who came and offered himself once for all. And through him we have forgiveness. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties again and again. He offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. Because by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, This is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, there is no longer any sacrifice for sin. Alleluia, they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. Alleluia.
mercy and peace are yours from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning we'll consider these words from our Gospel reading. I'll reread a couple of verses. I tell you the truth, the time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to live, and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, several weeks ago the Red Cross issued a plea for blood. They said that the blood supply has been hampered by the virus and that the supply has now dropped to the lowest level in the last five years. And so you'll see encouragements like this that say, give the gift of life. The thought is, by donating blood, you can become, in essence, a life giver. Have you ever done that before? I gave blood a, a, a while ago, but the last two times I gave it, I passed out. Decided that wasn't a good use of medical staff, so I haven't done it for a while. So instead of becoming a life giver, I'm <coughs> may be sweet enough to become one of these, a life saver. You know, you heard about the man Clarence Crane who, who made these about 100 years? Very, very popular. He made a mint. <laughs> well, this idea of being a life saver or a life giver, we tie those thoughts together today as we celebrate on this Sunday called Saints Triumphant. And we find joy in what Jesus has done for us as we look ahead to the last day. So we'll consider these words from John chapter 5. Let's look at them again. I tell you the truth, a time is coming and is now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And those who hear will live. The key to understanding this section of the reading we have to understand what the word dead means. Now, a few weeks ago we talked about this. We said the Bible talks about death in three different ways or on three different levels. It talks about a physical death. Physical death is the separation of the body and soul when there's no longer a soul connected to the body and the animating force is gone, there's no longer any life. So sometimes the Bible talks about a physical death. There's also something that the Bible talks about as a spiritual death. When there's a separation between God and man. When that relationship is broken, that's a spiritual death. And then there's also eternal death, which is eternal separation of body and soul from God. And the question we have now is which of these three is Jesus referencing in this first section of John 5 that we're looking at? And again, if you look at the verse, Jesus says a time is coming and has now come. And if you read the surrounding context, what Jesus has just said a few verses before, we come to realize what Jesus is actually talking about here is spiritual death. He says a time is coming and has now come when people will begin to listen to him and they'll be transformed and changed in here. What he's saying is that he has the power to take a dead person in here and make them alive. He says the time is coming and is now coming. He's calling the people to listen to him. Now we listen to that verse and we wonder to ourselves, how does Jesus have this power? And he explains that in the next verse. He says, for as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted to the Son to have life in his, himself. And if you think about the picture there, those three inter interchanging, the picture of the Trinity, God has life. We, has a, we have a God 
who creates life. We have a God who makes life from the very beginning, from the creation of the world. God spoke and there was life. Think about the book of Ezekiel, all those dry bones, and then there's life in them when God comes and speaks to those bones. Jesus comes and he brings life to people who are dead on the inside. Jesus gives spiritual life. You know, you think about all the crowds of people that Jesus spent time with. Gives us a different way of looking at people, right? That it's possible for a person to be physically alive, alive on the outside, but dead on the inside. Spiritually dead. Living a, a physically, a physical life but having a broken relationship with God. And someone said that when Jesus walking around, he was like the life, life giver walking amongst the corpses of people who were only alive on the outside, but dead on the inside. And he walked around to give them life. Part one. When we listen to that, we say, that is amazing. That Jesus could bring someone to life. But do you know what Jesus says about that? He says, don't be amazed at this. For a time is coming who are all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to live. Those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. At the end of that section, he talks about sort of the evidence of faith good or evil. But Jesus says, don't be amazed at this. Because there's a time coming in the future when he says, all who are in their graves, think about this, all the people who are in their graves will hear his voice. Again, the power of his word. And they will come back. You know, that's amazing to think about, isn't it? Because there's a cemetery over there, and we probably all went over there. And there's a cemetery over there, and there's a cemetery over there, and there's a cemetery down there, and there's a lot of cemeteries. And we've probably all been to one. But listen to what Jesus is saying. All who are in their graves will come out. And the thing about when Jesus says that is that that's just not just like a nice thing to say at a funeral. Jesus says that because he is the life giver. He is the person who is able to restore people to physical life as well. And we know why. Because when you think about how does the Bible talk about this? You know, we have all the different words, right? We talk about death. We say the person died. We say the person passed away. He said the person passed. How does the Bible talk about this? Do you remember some of these passages? Familiar ones, Psalm 90. You turn men back to dust, saying, return to dust, O sons of men. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. Oftentimes in the Old Testament, the Bible refers to the sleep of death. That death is like going to sleep. What about in the New Testament? Remember that uh, lesson about Stephen being stoned? Remember that? He was preaching about Jesus. People said, we don't want to hear anymore about Jesus. And they actually, you know, threw rocks at him, literally. What did he say? Falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. You know, we look at that and say, no, he didn't fall asleep. They were throwing rocks at his head. He didn't just fall asleep. But it says he fell asleep. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, the great resurrection chapter of the Bible, what does he say? And behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. There again, same word, sleep. 
But what did Jesus have to say? You remember that with Jairus? Jairus' daughter, she was sick. She was dying. Jesus comes over. What did he say? Jesus said, go away. The little girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. Right? Here comes Jesus walking in to this girl. She's, she's gone. She, she's not breathing anymore. She, she's dead. Jesus, are you just saying something nice to us to try to help us feel better in the moment? She's gone, Jesus. And they laughed at him. But you know why the last laugh? He did. Because he raised her back up to her feet. He put the life back in her. Because he's the life giver. Jesus is the one who has power over life and death. And that's why today we can celebrate a Sunday that we call Saints Triumphant. That God's people will rise again. <coughs> that people that you and I know will rise again. That people from that cemetery and that cemetery and that cemetery and that cemetery will come back to life. Because we have a God who infuses people with life. We have a Savior who came to bring life to people. And to bring them eternal life. That while we sit around and look at the ravages of sin in this world. That cause physical death and spiritual death and eternal death. That we have a God who loves life. And who brings his people to life. <coughs> and so what's the takeaway for us this morning from this lesson? It was in the first verse. Do you remember what Jesus said? He said, those who hear will live. It was an invitation it was Jesus saying, listen to me. Listen to what I'm telling you. And he was saying, don't just listen with these ears. Listen with the ears of your heart. Are you listening to Jesus today? Are you listening with your heart? <coughs> Are you just letting the, the, the words pass through one ear and out the other? Or are you allowing those words to sink in and to listen to what Jesus is saying? That he has the power of life and he's giving it away for free. He wants to give it to you because he's come to be the Savior. That he brings people who are dead on the inside back to life with the promise of his forgiveness that he brings people who are physically dead back to life with the same power with which he was raised from the dead. When you hear the word of God, do you listen to it? Do you believe it? Do you trust what he says? Because this is your Lord who's speaking to you today. It's the God who loves you, who made you his own, calls you to believe. Like this picture, it's as though Jesus were speaking to this young man. You see, he's got his bags all packed. I read this devotion this week, and something like this. 
Maybe you're running away. Maybe you're running away from the protection and freedom of God's way and instead you find yourself on a rebellious path of sin. Maybe you're running away from broken relationships when God is calling and directing you towards reconciliation. Maybe you're running away from a ministry assignment that seems too big or impossible. You're spending way more time focusing in on your own weaknesses instead of leaning into his strength. Maybe you're running away from the uncomfortable, the people, the city, the job, the unknown, because the pressure is closing in on you on every side. You can't possibly see how this is all going to work out. Maybe you're running away from God himself putting ultimatums on the creator of the universe, stubbornly announcing that you won't believe until you see whatever. Are you running away? Have you packed your bags? <laughs> that life is too hard. There's too many problems. There's too much trouble in here. Listen again today to the words of the Savior. It's a promise. Those who hear will live. Because he's the one who's the life giver. When it's dead in here, he brings us to life. When we think about the funerals, He brings us to life. When we think about eternity, He brings us to life. We have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Because when you give blood, you're a life giver. Amen. In the peace of God, which passes our human understanding, guard our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we'll continue now with the Apostles' Creed on page 41. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
We continue now with the prayer of the church, and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer on page 43. Dear Lord, you remind us today of your power as our life giver. We have so many experiences in this world that seem to drain the life right from us. We are surrounded by a world of, of sin, not to mention our own sins, that drain the spiritual life out of our hearts. Turn us again to you. Let us see your strength, power, and love. Grant us strength to serve you while we remain on earth, to remember each day that each day draws us one day closer to eternity and to you. Help us find joy in your promises, keeping an eye on the things that you have fulfilled and one day will fulfill in and for us. Help us to live out each day on earth the knowledge that you are coming soon. Dear Lord, we pray today for any who are sick or ill. Grant them your healing. We ask that you will keep those who are hunting safe. As the weather changes, we ask that you will keep those on the road safe. We pray for those who work in public service and ask for your protection. We also pray for those who served in the military and for those who served in the past to protect our freedoms. Help us to treasure the many blessings we have in this nation and to use them in our lives to serve you. These and all our prayers we bring in our Savior's name, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue now with our next hymn. It's uh, the hymn that's found in the insert number 489. The team will come at ages end. It'll be on the insert of this also on time. <laughs>
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
and then we'll make sure we pass it along to Pastor Clapp. But that meeting again is this coming Thursday. Then after the pre-call meeting, um, the congregation will have a, a call meeting to call a, to call a pastor, and that will likely be sometime in December. So it'll be a couple weeks of time for for some of this process to take place. So if you have any other questions, I'll be glad to answer it as you leave today. Rejoice, Jesus and his people will be triumphant on the last day. May the Lord bless you.